Hi, my name is Nicole. Um, I was selected to test Porcelain's new Jackie sports bra. And because I have a history of uh, using Inkscape to adjust patterns um, for using my projector for sewing, I was asked to do a little bit of a tutorial. Um, so Porcelain uh, has the nice feature that all of their sports bras are interchangeable in terms of their fronts and backs and waistbands or uh, yeah so um i am going to mash up the front of the jackie sports bra with the back of the laurel sports bra today and show you how to do it uh in in inkscape um, what i will also do is adjust the laurel sports bra pattern because it is not a projector file um, I prefer to cut all of my fabric. Uh, I, I, I like to uh, mirror the pieces that need to be mirrored. Um, I like to unfold pieces um, so that I don't have to cut on the fold. Uh, and then I also like to lay it out uh, because I so many different pieces in bra making, it is so easy for me to make a mistake and cut it out of the liner when it should be the main fabric. So I actually like to lay out my pieces um, for the main fabric, the lining and foam, um, just everything organized so that I know that I've cut all the right pieces in the right fabric. So let's get started. So I'm first going to open both patterns in PDF Stitcher and PDF Stitcher uh, was a is an application that was created by someone in the projector for, projectors for sewing groups specifically for um, um, piecing together files. Maybe they didn't come in a large format, uh, or maybe they um, don't have enough of a margin. Um, this also enables us to save uh, a version of the file with only a specific layer. Um, and because I work in Inkscape, that's really important because Inkscape doesn't recognize layers. Uh, so it is saving me a huge amount of time. So first of all, I'm going to open the Jackie. This is in a projector format. But because Inkscape doesn't recognize the layers, I need to isolate the layer that I want uh, with the size that I want. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to tell it I'm going to save it as Jackie 36D. Uh, and there's a few different things you could do here since I'm opening in Inkscape I'm not going to add a margin here and there's no uh, pages to tile together because it is a large format so I'm just going to deselect all and only select the ones that I want um, so let's say I'm doing the 13 millimeter adjustable strap tabs for all sizes the 36 band and specifically the 36D cup. And you can make it thicker here, and I actually think I will for the 36D and the 36 band and the adjustable strap. And all you do is generate your PDF. So that one's done. Now I'm going to go in and also open the laurel. Okay, tell it where to save. Now it is still an AO file, so it is all on one page. We don't need to tile anything, don't need to add a margin, but I'm going to select all of the stuff I need. So pattern details, pattern info for A to E, because I'm a D cup. And that's all that I need to select. So I'm also going to make the lines thicker on the D cup. I don't think I need to make that thicker. I think that is just text. So I'm going to generate that file and hopefully that's all that I need. Did not actually practice this ahead of time, so. Okay, that looks like it's been done. And I have Inkscape here with a new document. So I am going to go into my porcelain folder and I'm going to drag my Laurel file. It'll ask me what I want to drag and it's the whole, whole page. Click OK. Okay, so that's there. 
And now I'm going to go into Jackie. Jackie 36D, that's the one I merged. And I'm also going to add that. Now, if you hear my computer chugging, it's because I'm also recording me doing this video. So, I am going to save as, you can see what I was working on before, porcelain. And I'm just going to say Jackie Laurel 3060 SVG file. Okay. All right, so you can see this dotted line. Uh, so this is all one group right now, as is this. So we're going to have to start ungrouping because some of these files we don't need and some of them we're going to want to mirror. Um, so you've selected it, uh, object, ungroup. There's also a, a shortcut here, shift, control, G. And that looks like it got a lot of it. Uh, you can see the text here is all one group. I wonder if I can ungroup that as well. That would be super helpful. Sometimes you need to ungroup. Oh, here we go. Okay. Sometimes you'll need to ungroup it a couple times, um, just the way that some are formatted. Okay. So, oh, now you'll see this is still one group. So there's there's a few um, steps of ungrouping that will be required. Although, you know what? I'm keeping both these pieces. So maybe I won't ungroup. Maybe I'm okay with that. Um, okay, so this is the Jackie. I'm going to ungroup this because I, I maybe don't need the text. I tend to try to remove text that might be confusing for me. Okay. Um, so we're keeping this. This is the side front. We're keeping the middle front of the Jackie. Uh, but we are not keeping the side back um, because the side back is actually going to come from the laurel. So I am actually going to delete these. So I'm selecting them and I just click delete on the keyboard. And I'm going to keep the Jackie front waistband, although I could use the one from the Laurel. And I'm going to keep the, uh, the straps for the Jackie as well. Well, I haven't decided that yet, but I can make that decision later. Um, so I do not need the center. I don't need the back from Jackie because I'm using the one from Laurel. And I'm actually going to be doing a, an unzippered one in the front. So I don't need the zip, zipper shield or the bottom zipper shield or the tabs. So I'm going to take those out. I'm going to guess that the back waistband piece is the same for both, but I'm just going to keep it in for now because I just don't know for certain. Oh, and I'm going to ungroup that because I'm probably going to remove those lines. Yeah, okay. So let's look at the laurel as well. So I'm going to start ungrouping here. Okay, you can see it started to ungroup things, but you can see this uh, bodice piece is still grouped with other pieces that I do not want to keep. So one ungrouping didn't work, but the second one did. Okay. And then you can see the text is a different group to some of the um, lines that are making up this pattern piece. So I'm going to go back, like I, I've just selected it uh, with a left click on my mouse, selected it all, and I'm going to go to object and group again. And that way, I can move this around. The green line line doesn't move and everything moves together. Um, this is the side front and I actually don't need this piece anyway, so I'm going to delete it, but just showing you what you can do here. Okay. I'm going to ungroup some more of these. 
again. Sometimes you have to do a double ungroup. The quirks of um, open source software. Okay, I'm going to group this together and here's our first foray into unfolding. So first I'm gonna see, because this is not a projector file, um, Jennifer said some things may not be lined up grain line wise. This looks pretty good actually. I just dragged a guideline out of the ruler um, to see what, what it would do. It looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got this selected. I'm going to duplicate and I of course never remember where it is. Oh, here we go. Edit, duplicate. I always do control D instead. Okay. So you can see it, it, it's, um, looks a bit darker. So there's a, another layer on top and I'm going to flip it horizontally, horizontally. Okay, uh, as a default, Inkscape has um, it, it has like a snapping tool, so it helps you line up um, line up the edges. Now I can actually see here <laughs> um, that these this is not quite aligned. Uh, otherwise, this line would um, be the same narrow narrowness. Uh, all the way up. So I actually do have to rotate this piece. It's, it was hard to see. Maybe I should have this uh, zoomed in a bit more so that you can see. Hard. It's hard to tell because the line is thick, but I think it's just slightly off. Okay. I'm going to zoom out just so you can see this. So I'm, I've selected the piece and if you click to select it again, you'll see that the corners change to arrows. And this allows you to rotate. It defaults with a rotating spot in the center. I'm actually going to move it and I'm going to have to zoom in to see where exactly I am. Um, I am going to move the rotating piece right here because I know that this is where I want it to be uh, straight. Okay, so it's still going to appear there. This is going to be tricky because it's just got a little ways to move. I'm going to maybe go up to this top corner and I'm going to turn snapping off for now because I find sometimes when I'm rotating it wants to snap into a certain spot and it's uh, it won't let you move as freely. So it wasn't that far off. I think that looks a little bit better now. Um, so now I'm going to try duplicating and mirroring again and let's see how that looks so that looks a lot better you can see it's um, like an even thickness all the way down uh, for the most part so so that's pretty good so now I'm going to well I'll move this grid line. I might need it again for other pieces. And I'm going to select, so click one, hold down shift, and select the other one, and object group. And now I can move these freely to anywhere I want. So I'm going to move them onto my canvas. Okay, what other pieces do we have here? Center front from the laurel we do not need because I'm using the Jackie, so I'm going to select it all and delete it. Um, and then I mean here, um, we've got the back band, which I assumed was the same. And uh, this one didn't have layers for the different sizes. I'm going to assume it's the same as the Jackie. I'm just going to ungroup it and, uh, regroup just just the back, Oop, not everything got selected. Oh, okay. Sometimes text um, for non-projector files and even for some projector files, um, designers include text from more than one pattern piece in one group, which uh, can be a little bit tricky to maneuver, but um, it is what it is. 
So I'm trying to compare it to the back waistband piece, which is down there. Okay. Just to make sure I'm not deleting something uh, that I need. So let's cut through a fabric. And you can see here, um, thirty-six band, which is what I am, is lined up here. So I feel pretty confident in deleting the laurel back because I've got the Jackie back. Oh, you know what? I'm going to undo that. So I Control Z. <laughs> because the Jackie has a back uh, hook and eye, which is why it asks you to cut two. So I, you know what, I'm just going to keep this in and I'm just going to make sure I cut on the 36 line. I think that's what I'll do. So I'm going to delete all the things relating to the back waistband here. Okay. back up to my canvas and I'm not gonna go um, too much more in detail here because it's it's a long video as it is um, but I'm just going through and removing the pieces that I don't need uh, to keep me better organized um, so what I would probably do here is um, I maybe would add a square here and I would label it um, text box disappear. I would label it self here. And then maybe I would add another box here and put lining. Oops, I can spell. No, it's a little bit small for you if you're watching the video. Um, so I would take this then, at, because it does say cut one fabric on fold and cut one lining on fold. So I would take this, I would duplicate it. So edit, duplicate, and I would bring up a copy to the lining. So I know that I have to cut one out of lining and one out of cell. Uh, for this, I would cut, I would duplicate it. And then even though it's the same on both sides, I like to mirror it because it lets, it reminds me that I did actually mirror it. And uh, I always second guess myself on whether I reversed, uh, mirrored something properly. Okay. Um, the projector file, it already has the mirrored uh, versions, but then I would maybe copy one version into the lining and one into the cell. Same with the middle front, same with the center front, uh, front waistband, and then I have to decide what straps I want to do. And then when I've got all my pieces done, and maybe I'll just bring this up so that it's not so large. Okay, um, so this is my canvas, and if I were to save as a PDF right now, this is what would save. Um, and it is not including my lining. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all for now. I obviously need to get it cleaned up and decide what pattern pieces I need. I'm gonna save as my SVG, which is a working file in Inkscape. And then I'm gonna save as, oops. First of all, before I save, document properties. I want to resize my page to what I've selected and add margin. Um, we add a margin because our projector will cut off usually the first, at least the first few inches of a PDF. Um, and your projection may actually go off of your cutting table, uh, depending on what size your projection is. Uh, I know mine does a little bit. so. I have something right at the very tip uh, a, a pattern piece then it'll be cut off so you can see the canvas got 
quite a bit larger because of that. Now I'm going to save as my SVG again and save as yeah. Uh, and make sure you've got convert text to paths in here. We're having some issues when you didn't select that. And it should be here, Jackie Laurel 36D. And it's at 28.5, which is the zoom for my projector. So if I zoom out a bit, you'll see all the pattern pieces here. Um, yeah, so... I hope that was helpful in helping you uh, hack two or mash two patterns together. Um, there's definitely some more intricacies in Inkscape. For example, if you had some adjustments to do on the side of the front, then you would want to um, make sure that you adjusted the back uh, where it meets up in the laurel. Uh, and those are definitely adjustments that you can make in Inkscape too. Uh, with some practice. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, feel free to check out my other videos on Projectors for Sewing and our group uh, on Facebook called Projectors for Sewing. Thanks. Have a good night.